Blexit isn't new, just the recognition of recognition of the term is new. It's happening anyway. Right. You're buying a little spot of land. You're buying a town home. You're keeping your credit rating up. Now you're sending your kids to someplace better. What's happening? That's the evolution of generations. Back in the 80s, if you had a black friend, you were cool. By the mid to late 80s, <laughs> if you had a gay friend, oh, you were really cool. Yeah. If you had both, you were like, man, I'm hanging in the club and I'm man, good. Man, if we had a time machine, I, I, we could make a lot exactly, of cool people. <laughs> exactly, but there's a truth there because yeah. what happened? Generations started to evolve. Those people who were cool suddenly saw people differently. You know, like how teammates see each other. I know you may come from that side and that side, but we're playing on the same team, which is the American team. So as the generation evolves, the parties didn't always evolve. The Republican Party failed to engage blacks and urban neighborhoods because they had a strategy from 85 with the evangelicals. I get it, reality of political party, right? Mm -hmm. Red state, blue state, Republican, Democrat county, carve them up, you get your wins, I get mine, we play with redistricting. So the parties failed, but the culture's evolving and the party has to come along eventually. The problem is the party takes longer to come along. I don't have to agree with someone and that's not required neither is my offense or someone else's offense necessary because it's about freedom. And I think the people will drag it along, which is why I still hold more faith in the millennials than people on the right or left do. Are there ones that are troublesome? Yes. But are there more of them in this country when you do as I do, and I've been to every state and I've talked to people and I see more people who are saying, just let me live. Let me do what I can do to get my life where it is and stop trying to sell me on what I need to believe. Yeah, and we're really seeing that now with the generation behind the millennials, you know, the, the 16 year olds now who are not, you know, the 22 year old social justice warrior. Right, that, the virtue the way, signaling crowd. Yeah. yeah, that they now, their younger brothers and sisters are now going, well, something ain't right with that. But, but and, it's happened before. Yeah. See, this is, go back to the 80s for a minute. Let's go back, was it Let's back to back. the future? The 80s were all right. Re yeah. The rewind machine or is that this way. Yeah. Um, what happened for blacks in this country? You had a large influx during the growth of the HBCUs, you know, the real growth. You had affirmative action. You had more blacks going to colleges. You had all of this come out of the 70s and 80s. But it took time for them to graduate and kind of grow into the system. So they couldn't stop the march of blacks economically. Culture, yeah, historical voting, Democrats, parents of Democrats, grandparents, still there. Mm. But this slow erosion of you belong to us started back then. So Blexit isn't new, just the recognition of, recognition of the term is new, it's happening anyway. Right. You're buying a little spot of land, you're buying a town home, you're keeping your credit rating up. Now you're sending your kids to someplace better. What's happening? That's the evolution of generations. So I'm glad you mentioned Blexit because I wanted to bring up Candace related to all of this. So it seems to me that part of the reason that the Democrats are now screaming about reparations is because Candace Owens has been so almost single-handedly effective at talking to the, it's, I hate the phrase, the black community or the gay community, I, hate, I just hate that. Mm. But talking to black America, let's say, which also has, right. has its limits as a phrase. Yeah. But talking to black people and just saying, she always says it, she says it's the least, what I'm really saying is the least controversial thing you could say, which is black people don't have to be Democrats. Yeah. Nobody has to be a, a anything. You, you're not born with a stamp, you yeah. know. The, oh my God, look, it's a black baby. A baby. Democrat, yeah. white baby, Republican. <laughs> right. So she always says her message actually, uh, even though she can throw some firebombs out there for sure, her message actually is incredibly uncontroversial in a normal society. But it seems to me that she caused such upheaval in the way that the media talks about mm -hmm. black people uh, and that, th that after Kanye tweeted that thing, that suddenly all the hit pieces on Kanye, it's like that same game we always see with, yeah. him, you know, he's a, he should be in a mental institution. He's a it? sellout, he's, he's an a, Uncle Tom, yeah, he's the house the, Negro, he's got, Stockholm syndrome. Never yeah, you've heard all these. The you've heard them all. But but it seems to me that she caused such a uh, awakening that now reparations have become the norm on the left. When Barack Obama would have never thought about talking about reparations, and and he in a way now is a dinosaur of the Democrats. 
He comes off now, a guy that I'm guessing you disagree with on pretty right. much every policy, now comes off as pretty center, wouldn't you say, relative to the, to the crew now? Well, appearances can be deceiving. And I'll leave that on the table with him because I watched his history to where he got. But here, here's what's happened in a lot, in large part in the black community and in the American community. Because I like you, I don't like the segregation, yeah. but I recognize the reality of what it is. Uh, blacks and whites and any other ethnic group in America have started to look at their personal life and their economy and their opportunity more than they're looking at parties. So the message will resonate more when a Candace Owen steps up mm -hmm. and says, step away. What did Trump do during the campaign cycle? It was blunt, but it was, what the hell do you have to well, you lose? Gotta lose? And you know what, how many people say, something's not working in my life, what the hell do I have to lose? Let me try something else. It was that recognition that something's broken, right? Somebody pulled a fire alarm, there's a problem. Everybody's running around, their hair's on fire, lights and sirens are going off, but they already knew something was wrong, so now they're wondering, hmm, so what do you do if you're a left, that I call it the regressive, progressive left, what do you do? You now have to create enemies and fear and fear works. You tell people you don't have it because those damn Republicans, I know you've been living in Baltimore with 50 years of liberal rule and, and West Baltimore is a s-hole and this is it because you're living with it, but it's the white guy living over in Howard County's fault. Yeah, right. All right, so right, right. really? Yeah, or every time that somebody brings up, I mean Hannity deals with this all the time, you know, if he brings up the shootings in Chicago, and he talks about the black on black mm -hmm. violence in Chicago, they tell him he's racist. And it's like. Well, how come when the black. You guys aren't talking about it? How come when the black criminal uses the gun to commit a crime in a majority black neighborhood, it's the criminal's fault? But when the white guy uses a gun, it's the gun's <laughs> fault? Somebody please sort that one out for me. Yeah. That would cause some heads to explode. Yeah, but this is, this is simple stuff. People are starting to see this. Technology and social media. You and I are you know, on, on all these different platforms, podcasts, YouTube, Fox Nation, whatever. Technology and social media is piercing the veil. More and more kids, whether they're still getting the same images or getting more images, more imagery, more information on smartphones, on tablets, on computers. Little by little, that is piercing the veil. And in whether you're in a bad neighborhood, good neighborhood, everywhere in between, you know, that information's out there. So we have a job to do, you and I. Give people the information, help guide them. Yes, we, our beliefs are our beliefs. We have a right to push those out there. But help guide people to not only listen to why we believe what we do, but at the same time, go figure out what your beliefs are and then substantiate them and technology, media, social media, all of this, look, it can be misused, abused, and it is, Yeah. but it can be used and targeted. Where are you at on the uh, regulation of the big tech companies? Because it's a really fascinating one right now, but you've got Tucker Carlson, I'll do my, this hand, you've got mm -hmm. Tucker Carlson on the right, <laughs> and you've got Elizabeth Warren on the left, both calling for the same thing, which is a pretty fascinating political spot. And I think maybe I told you this privately, but when I went to, YouTube, and I met with Susan Wojcicki, the, the CEO of YouTube, in her office, or in the conference room, and I said, I'm basically the last guy not calling for regulation. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to play the libertarian thing. I'm still trying to find market answers to this. Um, but that's, that's becoming an increasingly uh, more minority position. Why they're calling for Tucker or Warren? Two different reasons based on their ideologies. And I'm with you. I'd, this is a longer term view. I don't want government stepping in and having a hand in something because you can never get their hand out of it or you can rarely get their yeah, hand out of it. pretty much. I believe in the free market. It's a patient game. It's a long term. Somebody, look, somebody else is going to come along with technology soon. Artificial intelligence. Or company, man, I'm working on Exactly. Yeah. And I know others that are working on competitive models. So whether it's five years, 10 years, they will have something in competition or they will evolve or age out. That's the nature of business. And I think that can work. But government getting involved is a danger because of this simple reason. If you're a congressman, it's a two year cycle. If you're a president, it's four, maybe eight years. If you're a senator, it's six years. So they think in cycles. And when the cycle changes, their solution, which rarely is the one you want, 
is more dangerous because somebody else can come along and change it, misinterpret it, write a new regulation, and ignore the basic principles of let it work out. And I say this to Republicans, I get it. Look, my Facebook page, somehow just basically, people, they don't get my feeds. Yeah. For a year plus, I've been effectively shut down. I, I literally have lost 90% of my reach at times. Yeah, they changed some metrics, but I didn't lose 90% overnight. Right. Yeah, you know, 90% didn't just drop. Right, and the fact that they're so untransparent makes you half the time think you're a conspiracy theorist. And then, and then in a weird way, they're playing off that, right? right? They never give you any information so that they go, oh, we changed the algorithm a little bit. It's a fan page, you're supposed to pay. Like, they're always trying to keep you guessing so that you don't right. even feel comfortable talking about it because you don't want to sound like Well, the like difference between person. conspiracy and reality for me is probability and possibility. Yeah. What is probable, what is possible, and on the ends you have you know, the reality, which we may never know, and the conspiracy. I don't want government becoming the overlord of any publishing platform. However, I do want the antitrust regulations to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. I do want the responsible bodies with oversight that we've elected them to do, to go in and say, okay, Technologies evolve, companies have evolved. Does antitrust mean this? Are they acting like a mono, like a monopoly and a monolithic body and are allow others allowed into the marketplace, which is different than Facebook saying Instagram, I want to buy you, that's fine. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.